Uh, hello, I'm uh, and welcome to the YouTube API uh, talk. Uh, I'm part of the YouTube API team. I'm a software engineer. I'm Raul Furnica. I'm also part of the UP YouTube API team. I'm Gunter Nork. And we have a third member of the API team present here, Ivan, over there. Um, we're all <laughs> based in Zurich, and we were, all work at YouTube slash Google from there. So we're kind of chat like right now. We just arrived yesterday. Um, but hopefully we'll get through very well. Um, we're, today we're going to talk about um, the, uh, the YouTube API in general. And this is going to be an introduction to the YouTube API and how to use it. And um, we're going to have a demo at the end. Um, and also, there is so the, in order to, to, to clarify, there's, sometimes there's a misconception because YouTube actually has two di different types of ATI, APIs. There's the data APIs and the player APIs. And the player APIs is what you, what you want to use if you want to actually play YouTube videos inlined into your specific web apps, for instance. Uh, and that's not what we're going to talk about. What we're going to talk about is the data APIs. That's more, more about fetching metadata, about uh, different, different entities on YouTube playlists, videos, and all that. Yeah. Or at least we're not going to talk too much about uh, uh, the player APIs. If you have any feedback, you can uh, give it during the talk over here. Um, do I need to leave, it, leave the slide up for a while until you scan it, or are you already done? OK. Uh, before we go on and we're going to talk, uh, we're going to present the agenda of the talk. I'm actually interested if anybody of any of you have used the YouTube API before, or if any of you have have created YouTube applications. Okay, cool. Okay, so for the agenda. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to show you today is um, we're going to teach you a little bit about. Uh, ways that you can use to build a applications that are integrated within the YouTube experience and uh, that you can use to, to, to explore the YouTube video content. And um, so what we're going to emphasize in this talk is first, uh, content discovery, and second, video curation. So in this case, that, that's going to be building a playlist. And, um, Yes, uh, that's what we're going to show. In the end, there's um, so in the middle, we're also going to show a little talk very shortly about user authentication because that's also needed for 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 doing write accesses. And we're all and in the end, we're going to give a short outlook of what what else you can find in the YouTube API because it's very large actually. And we're going to show you a little app engine demo as well. And there's going to be questions. Yes, I hope. We're also going to be at uh, office hours in one quarter after the talk, so you can talk to us directly there. Yes, so first, uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about content discovery. So, um, let me stop here. So, maybe you've, if you've got a cell phone, you could, you could uh, scan this link now and see what you, what you can find. We're trying to keep it very interactive, because otherwise you get bored, we get bored, and that's not good. <laughs> so, anybody got an answer from the URL above? What do you see? I hope no one's gotten a 500 error or so. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what you should have seen, and I hope you have all seen it, is um, an XML response. And um, so you are now officially already a YouTube API user. We are very proud to have so many users all of a sudden. <laughs> um, so uh, what, how, how you do requests to the YouTube API is basically very simple. Um, it's mostly, the, most of our requests are just done via HTTP. You, you construct a URL like this one, don't, don't look at it too closely now. We, we're going to explain the, the details later. And um, you, you send a regular HTTP request to, to this URL. Usually it's going to be a get. And you're going to get an answer that's in form of, of an XML reply. Uh, we're adhering to the, to the Atom standard there. That's a bit like RSS. And actually, our APIs are also based on, on Atom Pub, which is, which is meant for weblogs originally. but which we extended to also have this, all this video metadata. And 
So, and on this slide, you can see two of the most important tricks that you, those, so these are really the, the most important things that you will hopefully take from this session. So, uh, first, if you do any API request, you're gonna get a very ugly response because we try to limit the bandwidth used for it because we, many of our customers are on mobiles, for instance. So, if you add the, the, HTM, the, the HTTP parameter pretty print equals true, true to, this, to this URL, uh, you're gonna get pretty printed answers, and that's a big help in debugging. And then secondly, there is um, this page called gdataYouTube.com, which is also our, our, the, 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 the base of the URL for the YouTube API, which looks like this. And what you can do there is you can experiment with the different features that the YouTube API offers to you. So we've got listed most of our um, of our features that we expose through the API, and you can uh, very simply put together, uh, it, it's, it's, it's context sensitive, depending on which service you choose on top, you, you're, gonna get, you're gonna get a different interface, and you can construct a, a query interactively, you're gonna, gonna see the HTTP headers and, and URL, and you're gonna see the whole response with syntax highlighting and all of that. It's, that is very useful for exploring. So if, if, you're, if you're ever gonna build an app, and I hope, of course, you, you will do this, then uh, this is really the, this is the tool to use in order to, to figure out how, this, how, how it works in the big picture. Okay, so, and so back to our sh short example. So this is the response you were supposed to get after scanning this, this QR code. Um, different titles, though. What it is, is uh, we've got two different ways of exploring of, of discovering content on YouTube via the API. The first of them is equivalent to the, to the browse pages on YouTube where you, where you, can, where you can browse through different high scores, uh, charts of videos. And uh, in this case, you've re requested one of these particular charts called on the web, which is, which is our, um, uh, which is actually this, this little web log that, is, that exists uh, on, on the side of YouTube, uh, which, which highlights some recent trending videos on social networks on the web. And uh, we put together a list that is also here on the right. And th this contains the uh, currently trending videos on, on social networks. And that you can request through this um, particular um, URL. And the so list just, so just to add to what Kinder says, is basically just um, most shared videos on other sites, for instance, or most used videos on other sites on this particular. Yep. And we've got different way, we've got different charts, of course. We don't only have the things that are trending on the web, we also have the things that are trending on YouTube itself. And we've got, the, we've, we've got high scores of the top, most viewed, most popular, most recent, most discussed videos and all that. And in order to get them, you take this URL and you replace the, the part that says on the web with one of these keywords here, um, but there is much more. So we, we've got the, all, all of that in our documentation, uh, documentation page, and you, you can check it out. Yeah. Yes, so, and what it will return you is this, is this XML, and it, in this case, it's a bit trimmed down, but it actually contains a lot of different information about the video, so we've got the, not only the video title, of course, we also have streamer URLs if you want to um, show it in a player, We've got um, descriptions, of course. We've got r different user ratings. We've got, uh, what else do we have? Thumbnails. Thumbnails, of oh. course. Yes. Basically it's, it's, it's pretty large. It, it's about, uh, on, a, on a regular screen, it's about this size for a, for a single video. So we, we have lots of information. Most of the screen. <laughs> yeah. So, so in, in the discovery part, that's basically the very first uh, step in uh, actually finding out great content on YouTube. Uh, to basically use the pre-made lists of YouTube. And YouTube has a couple of pre-made lists, as uh, Gunther mentioned, but um, uh, if you want to use a more powerful search, a uh, more powerful tool, and you want to actually build your own list, then search might be one of the options you have uh, to use. And to run a YouTube API search is basically as easy as running the URL you see above there with a query term and a version parameter. The version parameter basically yeah. uh, states which API version you're gonna use right now. Uh, you're gonna, you should be using version two right now. It's the latest version of the API. And um, 
it, there is no sense in using version one anymore. Um, the query parameter basically matches any full text query parameter you might send on YouTube. And for instance, right now we're just searching for football videos and uh, oh. while I'm, I'm starting very simple, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of other parameters you can add and customize your search so it makes it a very powerful tool to actually find interesting videos on YouTube. Um, each slide I'm gonna go through, actually, it's gonna add two parameters. One is technical, how do you filter out or how do you ma manipulate the response, and one is on the content of the sets of videos you get. Uh, in this slide, on the content of the sets of videos you have, you can alter it by order by. That's a very important tool to um, actually select first videos that are either most relevant to the query term you're searching for or most recent under the published um, uh, uh. ordering or have most view counts or have uh, best ratings. Uh, those are the options you have right now to order by. And the second parameter I'm mentioning now is the technical part of the slide is basically fields. Uh, because the API response contains so much information about a video, it has thumbnails, it has um, ratings, um, number of comments, so on. Uh, you probably want to trim down out of that response, particularly to the uh, part of the metadata of the video that you're interested in. That saves bandwidth and that saves processing on the client side and you don't need to parse the XML or the JSON response for anything you're not interested in. And that the fields is a great way to do it. So for instance, here, I'm just saying I want the author of the video and the title of the video. Anything else I don't care, so it shouldn't be returned. So let's, let's say we're searching for football, but we actually get some content that we don't wanna see. We get some European football, like where we come from, and that's not really football, right? So we take it out with minus soccer on the, on the search term. So basically the search term accepts any Google search um, um, operators. If you know about those, you can read about those later into the documentation of Google search, but you can say minus soccer to exclude everything that is related to soccer. And that gets us more um, accurate responses for what we want. But even that is not enough, so we want even though we ordered by view count and we want basically uh, those videos that have been watched a lot lately, we don't want those videos that have been watched a lot for uh, the entire time they've been uploaded for, right? So we want something recent. Let's say we know something happened in football last week, so then we can add time equals this week and that restricts our search for only videos that have been uh, uploaded during this week. Uh, you can also, change that time into today, which gets us the freshest videos, basically. You can say this month and you can say all time. By default, it's all time. And on the technical side, so not, not actually changing the content of the search response is the paging. So by default, API pages are uh, 25 um, uh, entries and they start from one. Um, but you can do paging as, as you want, so start from 10 and have a page size of five. And that's basically start index and max results. And yeah, by the way, I've added this URL on top of the slide. So you can actually try all this uh, on your phone or on your uh, uh, Zoom later or now. Uh, they're very simple to run right now. So latest, uh, uh, you can add safe search. Uh, which is basically a restriction on the content um, that is, uh, we don't want videos that are not um, uh, safe for children or we don't want videos that are not uh, safe for certain audiences and that's basically safe search which has three options, non-moderate and strict, is again um, compatible with Google search which has the same options and the same meanings for each. Um, and, on the, and again, on the technical side, we have two more um, parameters we're introducing here, alt and callback. Alt basically changes the format of the API. So the API is very feature rich and uh, offers a lot of different ways to, to read the metadata of the video and parse it. Uh, we talked mostly about XML right now, so you're gonna have an XML parser, but that may not be what you're 
more, most comfortable with or much what you can use on your application. Uh, so you can change that with the alt parameter and you can say atom RSS through both XML. And RSS basically, it's one of the basic usage of the uh, API. You can use RSS to follow your friend uh, uploads, for instance, and just have it in reader and see when he uploads a new um, okay. video. JSON and JSON and script oh. or JSON C are basically more JavaScript options. That and um, JSON parsers are are all over the states and they are available in all um, languages. And lastly, if you use JSON and script, you can provide a callback. And my colleague Junta is going to explain how that works. Test? Good. Okay. So uh, this, is, this is a sample response that you may get when you, when you um, pass this alt equals JSON in script and callback equals show videos to, a, um, to one of our URLs, to one of our feeds. And so what this looks like is, this is of course uh, regular JSON. So it's a JavaScript syntax. You can put it into any JavaScript interpreter, and it will result in a JavaScript dictionary, which you can use to, to query it, basically. And um, because, so, um, so without this part that says show videos, that would be, so only this part, that would be the answer that, that you would get if you ask for alt equals JSON. But with alt equals JSON C in script, you also get this fancy show videos call around it, which is, of course, if you interpret it as a, as a JavaScript call, um, as a JavaScript source file, it is going to be a call to a regular J uh, JavaScript function. And you can use that. That's called JSONP. Um, you can use that to build very simple web apps already, like this one. So what you, what you can see here is we've got, uh, don't look at this part currently, but we've, whoops, <laughs> what we've got is, We've got a simple HTML page, and here we uh, simply source with the script tag um, a, a JavaScript source file that is actually located at this um, URL, which is, our, which is one of our URLs. And because we pass alt equals JSON C in script and callback equals show videos, we're going to get this response, and it's going to call the show videos function with this, with this JavaScript dictionary. And, uh, we just have to define the show videos function on top of that and make it add some HTML elements corresponding to these videos to our HTML page. And what we're going to get is already a very simple search application that, huh? oh, yes, it's in the other window. There it is. Yeah, so basically, so this is already a client looks. application for the YouTube API. And it's just code that feeds a slide. <laughs> yeah. OK. So and then now, of course, we have all these fancy videos. And we would like to, to do something with them, because that code does not do much yet. Um, and one of the things you can do with them is that you can enable your users to, to curate that into individual playlists and organize it. And that's what Raul's going to show you. Oh, but first. Um, before you can before before you can organize these playlists, there is one particularly um, not very nice prerequisite that you have to fulfill, and that's of course that you have to be authenticated. And there is different authentication schemes. So um, we're going to have you have to leave you with a bit of advice about this, and it's basically going to be this: uh, we've got four different authentication schemes, unfortunately. So that's of course a bit historically grown. Um, we have one that is called client login, which is deprecated nowadays. Um, it is deprecated because um, with this authentication scheme, uh, the user has got to trust the application with its actual username and with its password. And it's not, not a token-based system like Auth, where, the, where YouTube itself does the authentication and only allows the application to, to work with it later. And um, so the other three authentication schemes solve that in this way. So you, the user is going to be redirected to, a, to the YouTube page, for instance, and the YouTube page will um, ask him whether he wants to allow this application to access his data on YouTube. And um, so AuthSub is a, a Google-specific solution to that, uh, which is supported. 
And then there's also OAuth 1 and OAuth 2. We currently prefer OAuth 2 because it's the most recent version. The advantage of OAuth 2 is, of course, that it's open source and that it's used widely and there are client libraries for it and that may help you with implementing it. Yeah. So, but the, the big advice basically is choose wisely. Um, if, if you have your, you, if you're writing an application and you write it in a specific environment, specific language, just see that you can get the most support for any of these um, login schemes except client login. Yeah. Okay, so and we've got uh, lots of material on that in our blog. Anybody knows about OAuth already? Oh wow, that's, that's more than I expected. Okay, cool. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's not a Google specific technology, it's an open source um, uh, standard and Google is implementing it as well. So that's basically best to use in user authentication. Anybody knows why you would use user authentication or has a, a clear idea about why that's useful? Okay, so basically it's very useful. I'm gonna go through that in the second curation part of the talk, but it's very useful basically if you want to get to the user account data, right? So if you wanna either retrieve information about the user currently logged in or allow the user currently to log in and give your application access to his account data, or if you wanna change his account data. So if you wanna create a playlist, for instance, for the user, or if you wanna um, uh, up, update their favorites or their uh, ratings or so on. Uh, so in, in this particular uh, talk, we're gonna focus on playlists. Uh, but there is a lot of other things you can do with uh, authentication. Um, so let's say you find a great lot of uh, video content out there uh, for using the, the method mentioned uh, in the first part of the, um, of the talk, and now you wanna actually help users save this content into their playlist or um, uh, keep it somewhere so that they can re refine it easily without actually searching all the time. Um, first thing we need to do uh, in order to, to take one of the videos we find interesting and put it in a playlist is basically to see what playlist the user actually has already. Uh, to do that, we would need to go through authentication, which is probably the most painful point uh, we're actually describing in this, uh, in this talk. And once you get that done, everything is like super easy with the API. <laughs> It's like, but only that is like, you're probably gonna spend a couple of days figuring out what the hell is going on here. It's our experience as well. Like we've built a demo for this, um, <laughs> for this uh, um, presentation in particular, and we were like that as well. Oh my God, how do I get this going? But yeah, it, it's, it, it, it gets better with the, pre with the demo we actually have, because you can see the code and uh, learn from our um, own experience. <laughs> Um, so once we go through that and we have a uh, user authenticated and let's say we're already sending the authorization header which you already see there in the request uh, under OAuth or the authorization HTTP uh, header, um, then we can basically retrieve a feed under feeds API users default playlist. Uh, all the user information, all the spe user specific information in the YouTube API is basically under feeds API users under that path. And default is basically just a way to say the currently logged in user. So you don't really need to remember the username of the currently logged in user or anything like that. You can always form the same URL and use the de default placeholder to refer to the current user. So this feed would list all the playlists on that account. So we here have listed playlists on the um, YouTube account. Uh, YouTube basically has its own account, which is called YouTube, and it's on YouTube, so you can actually get it if you want. Uh, you can retrieve it on um, YouTube.com. And right now I'm listing the, the last two playlists on that account. Uh, and the most important part to, to check in this is basically that the playlist has an ID which is highlighted there. Uh, that is the part of the ID that is used on the website as well. So the website and the API actually share IDs. And that is the part you need to remember in order to be able to refer to this playlist later. So we, we can 
take the um, uh, list of playlists, show it to, to the user in some way, and then ask him to, to select one of them in order to update with his video findings. And then if we actually want to save uh, the video he, he actually likes into one of those playlists, all we need to do is a write request. A write request is unlike the, the request we showed you so far, unlike the, a, a simple HTTP get, so a simple return uh, from a URL. They're a post to a URL, or in some cases, when you actually modify, they're a put, or if you delete, they're a delete to um, an HTTP uh, URL. So for instance, if we want to add a video with the ID highlighted there, O, A, R, I, so on, uh, to the playlist with the ID D7002B, and so on, I'm just talking IDs here, that's really boring, but uh, you kind of get the idea. You, you need a place ID to form the URL, which place am I adding it to, and you need a video ID to say which video am I adding to that playlist. The video ID goes into the request body, and that's all you need to send in the request body that you see right there. So an entry with an ID, that's it. And then if that is successful, you're gonna get a response of 201 created, uh, and it's gonna give you a full um, body of the uh, entry that has been created in that playlist. There are many other, there are other responses you can get, but hopefully you'll get this one, and that means your operation was successful. Uh, the most unlikely to get one, trust me, it's 500 server unavailable. <laughs> We're trying to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, if that's happening, just let us know. There is a forum we're gonna um, tell you about at the end. Um, another one that may happen is 403, uh, service forbidden. What that means is either that you, ha you have not authenticated the user currently so he's not allowed to, to change the playlist because he's not authenticated. Or there is an authenticated user, but he's not the owner of that playlist, so he cannot make the change. That would be quite something, right, if we would allow people to change other people's playlists. That hopefully doesn't happen either. Uh, and since I talked a lot about the IDs, what you're gonna see after the playlist entry has been created is basically a composite ID of the playlist ID and the entry ID in that playlist. And basically, it's as simple as that as creating um, uh, and managing playlists. You can do a lot more. You can reorder playlists. You can um, implement even a better uh, playlist experience than the YouTube website, which is not, uh, not really awesome right now. It could be made better. So um, uh, all of that is basically available through the API, and it's really uh, almost the same functionality available on the website for almost everything. But besides that, uh, let's talk about a bit of other features available in the YouTube API. Uh, and one of the most important ones is basically the ability to upload videos. And uh, you can do that uh, through the upload API and basically anything you can capture a video with and send it over to, um, to the API server. It's creating a video on the um, YouTube uh, side. Uh, you don't need to actually specify metadata, so you can just post a file, and it's as simple as that, as posting a file, and then the user is later asked to provide more metadata about the video, but you can also provide metadata about the video uh, in the same request as uploading the um, video. Uh, there are a couple of community features exposed through the API as well, so you can um, uh, like, dislike videos, you can rate videos, you can comment on videos, you can respond on videos with another video. Um, you, you can uh, even uh, share videos with, uh, with your friends or with um, uh, SMS or email. And besides that, there are a couple of user-centric features like uh, managing favorites and subscriptions and uh, managing contacts on uh, YouTube.com. And of course, last but not least, is um, following friends' activity. So you can actually see what, are, what your friends are doing, or you can give um, in your application updates about um, uh, subscriptions and friends uh, on YouTube. 
Uh, there is a lot more than that, but I think I'm not going to enumerate anymore because it's going to take quite a lot. Um, one thing to mention, though, is that we have a lot of client libraries <coughs> available for the YouTube Data API. And they're all, uh, you can check them out at Good GL Marley. I quite like that it was randomly generated, but it's quite a nice name. Um, there, there is the one for Java, C++, and Python, for sure. Uh, there might be others for uh, JavaScript and, um, and other languages as well. And there are also pointers to other languages as well over there. So it's demo time, and you can scan this uh, link and try it. Can't keep the mouse over certain topics. <laughs> I'll have to keep that close. Okay. Oh, is there anyone? Yeah, if scanning the barcode doesn't work, you can use the short URL on top. Oh, yes. Here. We're prepared for anything <laughs> just to get it a demo. OK, uh, I'm going to switch over. So It's a very simple URL. It's a YouTube, YouTube API demo at appspot.com. Not here, not here, not here. Where is it? Oh, I've got to click it? No, go back. Here. Where? Here. Here. Ah, here. OK. <laughs> Very true, thanks. OK, so that's, so that's uh, our little demo app. It's, it's showing exactly what we also showed you in, this, in these slides now. Um, so now we actually do what we talked about. <laughs> right. Here you can, by the way, also find this little JavaScript app that fits on one page. Um, so um, the way this app is built, as a very simple overview, is uh, it's built an app engine, so it's a Java server engine, and um, we do our a API requests server side. Um, it really depends. Uh, there are there are a lot of tricks. We, for instance, uh, first we try to build something like that a client side. We figure out it's not actually possible because there's cross domain restrictions in where you can do your post requests to, and you can't actually modify content on YouTube from the client side. And so this is because, so, so in this way, I would like, if, if you want to do something that modifies content on YouTube and where users have to log in, then it is a good idea to do it server side, um, or at least in a mix. So. That is, um, of course, if you're writing a server side app, like uh, App Engine. If you're doing an Android app or anything like that, then you're just doing uh, client yes, side. Yes, right. If, you, if you're not doing a, a web-based app, it's, it's different, of course. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, this is, a very, is, is the very Remember simple. Remember first slide? <laughs> first slide, exactly, about, um, about the video charts, the different high scores of videos that you can see on the, on the YouTube page itself, where you can, where you can browse videos. So uh, yes. Um, and what, what this does is basically, we, we've got the source code to most of these servlets. On the, on the side as well? Yeah, so you, you have the, um, see the, the app out. running, and then right next to it, you have the code. So you can check it out. I don't know how many of you read Java. I'm, I'm going to try to add even code for, um, for other languages. Uh, how many of you use Java, by the way? How many That's of you would lot. use Python? And how many of you would use C or C++? OK. Something so completely different. Like we need Python <laughs> here. OK. <laughs> Okay, so here you can see that we use exactly the same URL as, you, as you've seen on the first slide um, without some of these parameters, uh, which is, in this case, handled by the client library, mostly. So basically, we need two parts to, to actually make a successful client library usage. 
which is basically right here in YouTube Get Feed. I don't have um, uh, a way to point, <laughs> so I'm doing it manually. But um, you need to have an application name and an application key. And uh, I didn't talk a lot about that, but you can, if you, if you need to write to, to the user account, then you need to register your application with YouTube. Uh, there are a couple of, um, of uh, benefits for doing that anyway. So if you register your application with YouTube and there is a dashboard where you go register it under your Google account, uh, you, get, you basically get uh, a lot more quota for your application. So you can, um, uh, that's of course because if there is an abuse of your application from somewhere else and we know where it's coming from and uh, we can alert you and let you know. But besides that, you're gonna get really nice graphs uh, with your, your application traffic. So it's going to tell you like, oh, your application is being used, and in particular in this um, in these features, and then uh, that's failing constantly and is producing errors for the user, and you can check that, or that's working wonderfully, and you can see that as well. Uh, besides that, uh, the application key can be sent very easily in a simple, in a header, and if you connect, if you get your application key from some configuration somewhere, which is really now from a server context and you add it to your uh, YouTube service which, which you connect to the API server, it's basically gonna send it on every request and you just forget about it and do it. Okay, uh, let's go on to the search, yes? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is looking, so as a short comparison, maybe this is the first servlet, this is the second servlet. They look very similar. Uh, the difference is that you can edit the, the search string here basically, you could, for instance, they search for Google Talks. He Google, likes Talks, Google Talks, I.O. I've you, been seeing him searching gonna, for Google Talks all this see week. The, <laughs> last, all last week. I, I watched <laughs> quite a bit of them when I hacked on this. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, here you will, for instance, then see some, some talks that were given at recent I.O.s. So, in, in this sample as well, you have a kind of well-formatted title with the kind of formatted author and a well unformatted description of the video. <laughs> we didn't spend a lot of time working on this, but uh, on, on the formatting part, because uh, we didn't want to uh, showcase that, we want to showcase the API usage, basically, yeah. but I'm, I'm sure we can do a lot better. Than okay, that. So, <laughs> so how this works is basically then, again, here, if you compare these two servlets, um, I'm not gonna do this now in detail, but uh, they're, they, they are very, very similar, and the only big difference is actually that the that in this case, you're, you're gonna use a different URL and you're gonna give a, give a specific parameter and, and the rest, the whole, the whole viewing part, uh, expe except for the little box where you can enter the query is the same. Just a bit of an addition Be besides, so before we retrieved the list, so that's basically something maintained by YouTube and YouTube actually creates this list and has this batch job that's run, run over all the video corpus data and they come up with, um, uh, with like most viewed videos uh, last week and so on. Um, in this case, you're actually running a query, so you're not connecting to the URL directly, but you're just building the query and you have a query object that you can use to build. Uh, and that has all the properties that I have talked about in those long slides about the search. Uh, yes, yes, right. So here's a YouTube query object that accumulates basically this URL plus all the HTTP parameters and puts it together in a nice way. That's what the client library does. Um, okay, and then there's, uh, we've got of course um, some code and authentication. I'm not gonna and go do too part. deeply into this because it's a bit more complicated and you can, you can look it up on other web pages anyway. So, um, but I'm still gonna do it because otherwise the playlist part won't work. <laughs> so there's, basically there's three steps to auth here in this case. You, first, you, you're gonna obtain an unauthorized token. You're gonna authorize the token with, with auth. Uh, this is done by sending the user to that um, YouTube page, which the user can verify is hosted at Google, and he can He's actually add his- arguing. And hopefully we're not gonna see a 500 afterwards, but. <laughs> and then one second, one second. It's the presentation effect if it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I probably mistyped the password. No, it worked, okay. So 
And then so, YouTube's gonna ask, oh, there's this application, it wants to access your data, you want to allow it? And then the user's gonna read that, hopefully. Sure, and go ahead. Oh, yes. Uh, right now it's just all access or no access, yes, to the YouTube account. Uh, yes. it's on the, but it's only to the YouTube account. So usually YouTube accounts are linked to a Google account. Uh, you can gain access to Gmail with the same. Uh, and this is basically uh, the core of OAuth and why all the pain. Basically the user is being uh, requested in the, uh, on behalf of your application, access for your application. So here is he decides if he allows or denies your access. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna allow it in this case because we trust our application. And so then, and then you get a, the authorized um, token and you can exchange it for an access token that you can use for doing requests. Um, so we're just doing uh, uh, the API and uh, normal Google API folks a favor here by explaining you a bit more about it. But, uh, basically, OAuth has three major steps, and in each step, a different kind of token is involved. Uh, in the first step, there is an unauthorized token. You just get that, and then the user has to approve your token. That's the second step, where the user approves this token, and then that token changes into an authorized token. And in the last step, the authorized token needs to be traded for an access token, which you can later use to, to make requests on that account. Hmm. Okay. And right now we made actually one, one authenticate request already. So we got the user profile and we know who the user that logged in is. So we can actually tell him, hi, name. <laughs> okay, so now that we're logged in, we can also use the user's playlists. Can uh, you actually go a bit on the code side? On what, which code side? So on the, For the OAuth, yeah. Oh, we only have a quarter of an hour left. Shall we not? Yeah, I think we have time. As you like. Okay, so there you go. So this code again walks you through all the OAuth process and it's very in line. There is no magic happening anywhere else and there is no ex method extraction, although we advise you, you probably do extract some methods out of this because we have a very large method to do that. But basically, the client library in Java has some support for OAuth already. And uh, all the all specific classes and all the parameters you need to specify and the requests you need to make, uh, the client library will help you with that. You just need to have some configuration for your application. And you actually need to register your application with the OAuth as well for that. And in the first step, you actually get this unauthorized token. In the second step, you need to authorize it by basically constructing a URL and sending the user, so you need to give um, away your control uh, of the requests of the user to Google with the callback URL, and then Google will call you back your, your application with the uh, authorized token when, when that has completed. Okay, so. Uh, and if you open a bit the My User Profile servlet. Where is it? Oh, here. A third, yeah. And this is the first server that actually makes a call with an authorized user. So the difference between the ones you saw before, it still uses the URL. It connects to that URL to retrieve the user profile. It retrieves the user profile of default, so that's the currently authenticated user. And it adds the OAuth credentials. You can see there, like, YouTube set OAuth credentials, OAuth parameters. That's basically what you need to send on every request to say, I'm, this, I'm authenticated as this user. All right. Yeah. So uh, let's have a look at the playlist very shortly, and then we can go to the Q&A. Uh, so the playlists, that, how that looks as an application, is for, for instance, like this. So these are the playlists that the cur user currently has. We can uh, have a look at them. We can edit them, maybe um, rearrange the videos in the playlist Again, a bit. Don't take us as UI models. <laughs> you probably can do much better than an up and down, but yeah, it works. So. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, and then there's of course what is what what you can also do then is is that you can have find find so fancy now if you videos. Remember, Let's see. Google we actually did the uh, trick here. 
uh, if you remember when we searched first time, we didn't have the, um, the second part where you can actually add a video to a playlist. Now it's there because we actually loaded the playlist of that user. Yes, so the, we, the, this is a bit of a hack though. Uh, so <laughs> so you, can, here, you can choose the playlist that you want to, to vi add a video to, then you can add it with this button and this is all then done server side by, by doing a post request to the YouTube API to a specific so that's URL the last and it's, slide, gonna insert a, it's gonna insert a video into a playlist and, yeah, and then later the user can go to the page again and rearrange if he likes. Um, yeah, and we've got the code to that as well here. Um, it looks very much the same as the code you've already seen, apart from that one of these calls is called insert instead of, um, instead of get, I think. Uh, yeah, it's over here, there, service this insert. One. So that's, but that's the detail of the, of the GData client library for, for Java, yeah. Okay, so yes, I think that's pretty much it. We can. So um, one, one more thing to mention. Uh, on, the, on this page, you also have a couple of very useful links. Uh, the YouTube API homepage basically is linked there. Uh, the reference of the API, and we have a very good documentation. Oh, yes. uh, we use it to refresh our, our memory about what our API does as well. And it's awesome. We have one of the best tech writers uh, in Google. Uh, there is a blog as well where we post about new features. And there's going to be some new features coming soon. Um, there is a forum where you can talk with other developers or our de developer uh, relation engineers or even ourselves. And uh, there is the YouTube API gallery where you can try and see what other people did with the YouTube API. Uh, and there's some cool stuff there. Mm. So this is how our docs look like. It's, so it's pretty exhaustive. We've got documentation on, on all of our public uh, feeds and, and what you can do, how you use them. It's often very use case driven with examples. So uh, actually for, for the demo, most of the code I just copied from the documentation. So it's not, or no, no not quite, but roughly. It's very, it's very it's, you, you've got to understand a bit how this works in, in, in XML and, and how this has got to do with URLs and parameters to URLs and so on. But once you've understood that, and then you can use the documentation very easily to transfer that to any client library you may use. Okay, so any questions? Yes, let's go to the questions. Yeah. We've been so good at explaining everything. <laughs> yes. Yes, the only thing you need. Uh, not quite. Yes, yeah, so users can have private information that uh, they can only see themselves. For instance, if you, uh, your age on YouTube, for instance, that's a very simple example. Or you can have private playlists. And when, when you're authenticated as that user, you can see that information with a regular, uh, with a regular, um, in the regular way that you would also use for other users, and you will still get to see this information. So that's. That's public, yeah. Yes, yeah, that, that's public. That most yeah, so OAuth works, is only yes. when you actually want uh, access to the user account. Yeah. It's almost any, uh, yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot. We've, for instance, you can, um, uh, for basically, if you go to, if you've got an Android phone and you, you play with the YouTube a, uh, application on it, it's using the API as well. So, yeah, so that, that's the all this stuff you can, you can do yourself. With We're the, basically with the implementing API. everything because we also implement a lot of functionality yeah. in our own YouTube application. Yeah, so so that means everything that's there, it's public as well. Yeah, so, so that means, so most of the applications will usually do something like they, they're gonna, so the, the applications like on, on phones, for instance, they would show, show some, some videos that we have in the, in, the, in the video charts that we exposed, that's the first example that we showed you. Then they're gonna allow you to browse a bit, they're gonna allow you to, to upload videos, or that's also possible to upload videos through the API. That's a bit more complicated though, because it's so much data. And, um, but you can find it all in the documentation. And so you can, you can rate videos, you can, 
Um, I think you can comment on videos, make playlists. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Do you subscribe in a way to a certain video for the comments? Yes. So that you can get, is it like a, like a stream? Yeah, so every feed we talked about, it's also like an RSS feed. So everything is basically, you can subscribe to them with an RSS reader, and you can see any change in the comments of a video or like in the change of the uh, videos on an account, on the playlist or anything. Yes. There is a limit, and <laughs> that increases when you register your application. And then even if, if, you need, if you need more than that, then you can just uh, reach us in the uh, developer forum. Yeah, so, but the limit is not that high. Like, as a regular user using your cell phone, you, it's very hard to, to hit, I think. It's probably impossible Yeah, to it's hit. pretty generous. So you, you, can, you can well have many, many users. Oh, and by as, the way, it's actually as, the, the, same time. the highest traffic API at Google. Yeah. And if, so if you're still hitting the limits, you can, uh, what, what you would usually do is that you register and depending then, of course, if you, if, if you want to, to uh, if you've got something that is, that is of value for you and for YouTube as well, you can as well also contact us if you want to have something very special, but that is, like, there's not many people doing that. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for showing up. Hopefully it was useful. Okay. <laughs>